In this video, I'm going to teach you how to install the DLSS or XESS mod, as well as give you some insanely useful and really, really good engine any tweaks, which includes an FOV slider and the disable of mouse acceleration. We're also going to go over some in-game settings, as well as some other mods that you can add that will improve your experience, and some other useful tips to try to improve your optimization as much as possible. What's up, world tripper? Back in the river to check out all things Starfield. Okay, so first, let's go over how to install our actual DLSS mod in that way, or XESS, of course, and that way you have the upscaler going and you can get the most amount of frames. This is significantly better than FSR, although FSR isn't terrible in this game. DLSS is significantly better from what I found. Okay, so let's jump into it. So first off, we're going to come to this page here. I'm going to have this link down below. You're going to need a few things. You're going to need this download as well as this upscaler base plugin, which is over here. These files will be located into here as well. And you'll also need for either XESS, I do believe there's a different website to download from. I'll have to find that location. I'll look out for it. You might have it here in the description. But regardless, if you can't find it, then I'm going to have that down below. And also for DLSS, the DLL files are here on Tech Power Up. So that's kind of where I knew where to go. You can come here. We're not going to be using any of the 3.0s. We're probably going to be using 2.5.1, although you might be able to put a 3.5 in there and, and just not use the 3.0 features. However, for now, I'd probably just use the DLSS too. And as you can see here, actually on here, he actually does have the XESS thing here. So you can head over into that location and head into download that. So once we have all three of these files downloaded, including whatever upscaler you want to use, we'll have these and hopefully you have WinRAR or 7-Zip. I'll have a link down below for that too as well if you need. So we should have all three of these files here and we'll kind of close them one by one as we go through here. But let's open up our main file structure. I'm going to have mine down below because it doesn't really matter, but it's going to be different for you. It's going to be in your program files, games, Steam library, Steam apps, common and Starfield. At least that's where it should most likely be. If it's Windows, it might be a little bit different, but just navigate into the actual directory of the game and it should be fine. So first up, we're going to go ahead and drag these into our actual directory. You see that I already have them here, so I won't do that right now. Once we do that, we'll go ahead and close out of that so that we know we're done with it. Then we need to go into our actual mods folder. This won't be here. I'll drag this upscaler plugin folder right into here. And so then it will bring this into there. Once we have this structure set up here and we have the mods folder set up, again, that was already set up for you. We then want to navigate to our actual upscaler. We can go ahead and close this now and we can grab and drag this into here. You should have both of these here. You're either your XESS or DLSS file and we should have all that set up there. This stuff won't appear or this log file won't appear until you actually launch the game. Once you launch the game, you need to hit the end key on your keyboard. It'll pop up a little dialog box. You could see it here also from the Nexus mods thing here. It should be enabled by default, but I'll go into more of the stuff. When we get onto the graphics section, I'll go on to more of the stuff there and kind of how to enable all that stuff. Now we also have this little optimization stuff here that's being released. This guy's doing some engine any tweak files. However, if you wanted to edit your engine any tweaks or wanted to do for certain medium, low, high, or ultra settings, you do have that option here. So for example, he's editing these ultra settings here. He'll have this in the download or it gives a few optimization stuff here. You can check exactly what's being changed. For the most part, it's not an insane difference. There is a few things there that he changes in the any file, but you could do this yourself. You don't actually need to download this mod. I'll include this link down below for this because he is updating the high, low, and medium ones, I think, as well. And for me, I tried it with Ultra, but it just didn't run very well. I'm not trying to play on Ultra. I'll show you my settings in a bit. So I hope he drops like a medium or high one, and I'll probably maybe end up trying that. But you can come into here and edit a few things if you wanted to. There's some stuff in here. You could reduce the shadow map resolution down right here, this uh, 3072. There's also a location here in one of the postings, I believe, where somebody includes the exact things that he changes. And yeah, here's the exact stuff that he switches out. So you can kind of copy these if you want. You don't have to actually download his mod. You can kind of just do these yourself or just change a few of them. Kind of see what he changes here and it will have the changed location on the right there. And as you can see, I kind of already have his in here for the ultra settings. So I guess it does save. I thought maybe it would be overwritten. But yeah, so my ultra settings are saved as his as I just kind of downloaded his and used it. And I also backed up it. If you do replace any files within your file structure, make sure you're always backing up. Do that easily by just doing dot back at the very end here. And then that will make a backup of that file location. Or you can copy it to your desktop like I did. And you can also have that there as well. 
Okay, so moving on to our next location. I'm going to have this down below too as well, but this should be under your user documents, my games, and then Starfield. And in here, you will have probably preference, but you won't have this one. So what you want to do is you want to right-click your desktop, hit new, and then hit text document, and then you're going to type Starfield, the capital, and then custom, as I did, dot any. You'll finish that off there. It'll create a new file. And it will ask you, it will give you a little prompt to change it to an any file. You go ahead and click yes, and then it will switch it over to this. You'll come into here, and these are the settings that I use. I'm going to have these down below in the description down below, so you can actually copy these. I always play at 103 FOV in every game that I play. There's a few, a few exceptions. Sometimes I play at 90, because sometimes it feels way more than it actually is. Um, but here I do actually play at 103. Again, I really like this. I got mouse acceleration turned off. And then as well, I have a mod that I'll showcase a little bit, which is the move or disable XP mod. We'll go ahead and you'll have to slap that in here if you do have that mod. Or it seems like any mods that are being activated right now are going to have to be activated through this any custom. So I'll have this location down below. But these are really nice for mouse acceleration. It's really nice for your FOV slider, which is a big one. I know people have really wanted the FOV stuff. Here's how you do the FOV. You could do both of them for your player and your third person view. First person, third person, and I kind of like both at 103. In fact, when you kind of zoom back on your player, it really doesn't feel like it should. It should be way farther back, and especially for the first camera angle there. So these are the two adjustments here for the camera and your FOV, and then mouse acceleration, as I said, and this is a mod. So these are two, or these are three really, really good things here. The mod I'll also showcase here really, really briefly. It's this mod. I've had a little bit of issues getting it working because I don't understand the file structure that he's asking for. He said put the mods interface folder inside Starfield's Data Direct. I did that. Seems like the mod does work or doesn't work. I don't know. I've got to do some more testing with it, but I will include this mod link down below if you want to use it. It is obviously getting rid of the XP bar, so there won't be any more XP. Or it can also put it over to the left or the right. He has a few alignments there. I'll have the location, or I'll have the link down below for this. Again, you're going to have to add this little section here. When he talks about this section, you'll have to add it to the actual section here your custom any so that's how you do that there i want to briefly mention that there are additional settings if you don't want to use just mine and you want a few optimization settings or you want a few additional control settings there is a bunch here that this guy lists out a few of these are for look speed in the uh, pitch and pilot thing which i might actually include for mine because the plane or not plane uh, the ship rather is kind of it does feel really wonky and kind of jittery on the mouse so i'm hoping i probably will grab these and throw these in there this is the flight camera fov so you can even increase the fov camera on that as well as that i don't believe you need this default fov although you could change it but I, these two seem fine to work again i'll have this link down below and all of this stuff for his optimized settings if you want to kind of use this stuff here there are a few additional ones that he kind of threw in so i'll have these down below too as well if you want to copy these into that same location that we just showed you all right, so jumping into our settings here, if we do hit the end key on our keyboard, you'll see that it pops up this little dialog box. This is how you know that you got everything installed correctly. You'll see the resolution scaling. You'll be able to pick your DLSS and your preset. Preset F is usually the best, is remarked as the best, but you can go ahead and swap and change if you want. Out of here, we'll go into our settings. Now, the difference here is essentially when you're going into these game settings here, sorry, it's to play. Your render settings do matter a lot with this, and you'll need to have FSR2 on. That's like the most important thing. It's not, it, it basically replaces FSR2 with DLSS or XESS, and so you'll need to kind of have this set on. You also need to have dynamic resolution on. Both of these are kind of in tandem with each other. You can kind of see my settings here of where I kind of have them on kind of a balanced scale. Now, outside in the city, I do get around like 40, 50 FPS. I'm on an RTX 2070 with a 5600X, so I don't have like the best setup or anything. Nothing crazy. And then, then in interiors, I get about 70 to 80 FPS, which is actually really nice. The interiors actually feel really good. My resolution scale pretty down. Um, I, it, I've never done this before. I always play on DLSS quality mode. So for me, this is really low. I would recommend sticking with 60 and, and just kind of enjoy that. Uh, although for me, this kind of knocks my frame down about 5 to 10 FPS, depending on the situation. It does look a lot better. As you can see here, I'll kind of showcase what it looks like at 50, but it is a lot lower frame rate overall for the actual, when I go down to 50, you'll see that it just, it just does feel a little bit better to me. This is more closer to, to my 50 FPS mark that I kind of wanted, although I kind of wanted even more than that. There is a bit of like, you could kind of see like jagged lines. And if you don't want to have stuff like that, then definitely head to the 60% mark. At least I would. 
Other than that, everything else seems about good. They, the shadows are really good in this game. They don't seem to affect performance a ton, actually, surprisingly, because it's a lot of CPU intensity. So you might as well go with the shadow quality on high. And indirect lighting as well. Lighting doesn't seem to affect, as long as you have a good graphics card. I got reflections on medium particle quality on medium. I've always noticed that these are really taxing in games, so I've kind of had those on medium. Volumetric lighting as well. I've had at low because I've noticed that that's usually taxing, although you could probably go to a medium. It's still, I, I, I still think that it's like a bit of a, ta yeah, it's, it's, it's quite taxing of a setting. That was five FPS there, loss. We'll go out of the volumetric lighting. Now for crowd density, I do have on medium. I'll reset this on low if you wanted to, if you do have some CPU issues there. Motion blur off. GTA O, gonna have this on high. I do like the kind of shading that it does and the lighting that it does with this for the ambient occlusion. Then we have grass. I always have this on medium, especially for every game. Grass is always like really taxing. So I've always had that on medium. Again, contact shadows are always high for me. They are, I think essentially that the shadows on the faces and stuff. And those are usually you want really, really high in games. I think I have this on high on Apex as well. All the lighting stuff you kind of want on high because this game is very CPU intensive. The biggest things is crowd density on low and maybe volumetric lighting is very, really taxing. I've noticed these changing from medium to high was only like a one FPS drop, if that. So this was quite taxing. It was like five FPS. So I wouldn't do that. The field is obviously off. We're going to go on for VRS, of course, and then sharpening 70, fill gram at zero, dynamic resolution, and we went over this 50%. That does mostly cover for most things in here and kind of getting this game to run well. You can see that this is the uh, for, for the, F, the FOV mod here. You see how nice it looks as the FOV is kind of stretched back. I think it's a good median there. And you see here is the first click out. So where viewport, usually it's a lot closer than this. It's a lot closer when you do this first one out. You see, we can see all the way back here. We have a nice, and it really, it doesn't actually lower the frame rate really at all. So I'm not sure whether there isn't an FOV, FOV slider. Maybe it's for consoles and the parody there, but this does help. And it's a nice little simple engine, engine any tweak. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I'd like my and subscribe. Until the next one. Deuces.